Hi, welcome to Wanzi's Crochet and Knit. Today I'm going to show you how to join. I'm going to show you uh, four different ways uh, that you can join your granny squares. I just kind of sat down and made these up. They're not blocked or anything. So um, why don't we go ahead and get started. I'm using a contrasting yarn uh, just so you can see how this looks a lot better. The first one we're going to do is um, I use all of these for different reasons. It just depends on what you want your your um, your project to look like when you're done. Okay, so for all of these, what we're going to do is turn the front side of the square together. So we're just going to put right sides together, and we're going to work from the back. Okay, we always start in the corner, or at least I do. You may start somewhere else, but I always start in the corner. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to go through both legs of each side. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're, of course, joining them at the same spot in uh, the point of the corner. Um, that's why I like to choose the corner rather than in the middle, because sometimes you got to fudge it to make it come out even. Okay, so what we're going to do, I, I don't form a slip knot or anything. I like my projects to be smooth in the back. So what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to basically slip stitch um, this scene, this particular scene together. So I'm going to work halfway down and slip stitch and then I'll show you the next uh, stitch after that. So we're going to go ahead <clears throat> and just lock that in real quick. Okay. And then we're going to go to the next one. So make sure you go through both legs on each on both sides okay and then we're going to slip stitch there okay we're going to keep going and um, I do tend to get creative with um, my uh, joining like I said it's all according to what I want it to look like I usually join my afghan uh, squares with a uh, single crochet uh, I, I tend to like how that looks usually and it, it gives you a better seam that will stay together because I had a bad experience with how uh, it turned out one time and so um, I kind of stick with the single crochets in any seam that I use on garments or afghans but a lot of times it just depends on what you want it to look like. So this is how it looks. This is the first half in the uh, slip stitch. And now I'm going to go ahead and finish this side up. And we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're just going to do single crochet. So make sure you're going through both legs. And we're going to go ahead and just simply single crochet. Okay, and the only difference is if you choose to do single crochet, of course, you always have to chain up for your height. So instead of just going in and doing a slip stitch, you would go ahead and when you join it, you would, you know, of course, chain one. You chain one and then you go on and do your single crochets. So always remember to keep your height for your stitches. Okay, so we'll go ahead and finish this off. And always be mindful because uh, you hate to work a, a big square and and uh, find that you didn't go through all the layers which you can get that way if you're doing something big and you have a, a lot of squares okay so that's the last one so let's go ahead and see how this looks so go ahead and open it up and um, and this is pretty much how it looks as you can see uh, there's not much of a difference with how these look and I use a like I said a contrasting yarn um, so that you can be able to see it. I tried to use the black yarn but it it um it was too much <laughs> too much contrast so as you can see uh, but the difference between the single crochet and this top half is the slip stitch you can see that tink, that seam is a, is a lot tighter and of course this top will be tight once you you know weave it in it'll 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 get pulled tight and it'll look like the rest see so when I hold it back you can see that your seam is really tight and closed in whereas on the single crochet end it's not so tight 
you could still likely get the same effect you would just have to pull each stitch tighter as you're single crocheting but um, you get a, a better effect on that of course the back you will have more bulk uh, because this part is the slip stitches which of course lays flat and then the single crochet have that height from the single crochet so why don't we go ahead and start on the next um, uh, uh, two stitches and looks okay I'll be right back Okay, so like the other ones, we're going to go ahead and put right sides of our granny squares together. And we're going to be attaching front to back. We're going to do the same thing we did on the last, de the first demonstration, except for this time, we're only going to go through the back leg only. So the back leg would be the one facing you here. <clears throat> okay. Because you see there are the two legs here. You see there are the two. So this one is the back one and this is the front. And, then when, and what I mean is this back one is what's going to be the back of the afghan. And this is going to be the front. So we're going to hide our stitches completely by doing this. So you go in the back loop of, the, of, of this one and then you're going to go over and go to the back one of that one. So you see that the first loop is right here and that's going to stay unused. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to uh, slip stitch that. So let's go ahead and close that up real quick. Okay, so let's do the next one. And uh, this is another one of my favorite ones to do. Uh, it really, for me, like I keep saying, it just depends on what I want the finished product to look like. And sometimes I will uh, try a couple of stitches out and uh, and then decide which one I want to use. So we'll do a couple of more like this, bike loops only. And then um, we'll go ahead and we're going to do the same thing except for now we're going to single crochet them. Okay, and so when you single crochet in them, if you start out uh, your, if you decide to use a single crochet, crochet stitch, be sure to always, when you join them, chain one so that you get your height for your single crochet. So let's go ahead on and continue on. Back loop only. And this time we're going to single crochet. And we'll go ahead and do this to the end. And so... It seems simple, but a lot of times when you, you just ha don't know the ways you can join, when you have options, then uh, you really are, um, enjoy your finished project uh, when you have a choice of how you want it to turn out. And, and I like that personally, having a choice. So we finish with that. Okay, so once again, you can see there's, there'll be more bulk in the back of your projects if you do the single crochet because of the height. And your, um, sl your, your slip stitches will be, of course, flat. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this over, open it out, and uh, you see how these are pretty much hidden. And when you go to block them, you know, you'll, you know, stretch them a little bit. But this is how it will look. I like this because when I go to fold it, it, it is, it's easier to fold the afghan. And this top stitch is the, of course, the uh, slip stitching. And then here's the single crochet. And uh, if I have a project that's already pretty bulky and heavy and bigger yarn, I will go ahead and do the uh, slip stitching because that is much more uh, invisible than the than the single crochet. So I just wanted to compare the two looks for you so that you can see how they look and hold it back at a distance so you can see the top portion is the slipped and this is a single and it definitely hides better but I do like the folding action of when you got to fold it up it's a lot easier uh, to go ahead and fold. The last one is um, whip stitching. Sometimes people just don't um, 
don't want to crochet their seams. They just rather get, pull the needle out and go ahead and do the same thing. Or I should say, go ahead and do their seam with the needle. I do it as well sometimes. Uh, I, I should say I used to. I don't do it this way anymore. Just for the simple fact that I don't waste yarn. Uh, constantly running out of yarn. Um, because I'm um, doing over and over with the project. When you use your crochet hook to do your seams, you still are working on your active uh, roll of yarn, and therefore you waste no yarn. Uh, with Of course, with the whip stitch, you have to cut the end of the yarn off. Uh, but you can, uh, like, I, like before, go ahead. I'm going to go through, come work towards you, and of course, what that's left is we have to do what was comfortable for our brains uh, to comprehend. So we're just going to pretend like this is the end of the, the yarn. So when you do this, you would have to pull until you have about this much yarn. You want to have yarn to be able to weave in, of course, uh, when you get through with your project to have it uh, safe. So you're going to go through. And then I just like to go through one more time for good measure. Pull. And when I'm doing this, I'm doing back loop only and halfway through. And then um, when I get halfway through this, I am going to show you how it looks when you go uh, through both loops. This, of course, um, you know, it depends on what you're comfortable with, how fast you go. But uh, if you're a fast crocheter, then, you know, it just depends on what you're comfortable with. So this is how the whip stitch looks only working in the back loop only okay and so now we're going to work through both loops so we're going to go like i said we're working towards us unless it's just easier for you to work away from yourself let me go ahead and zoom this back out uh maybe it'll be easier for you guys to see so now we're going to work through both legs so you're going to work towards you you're going to pick up these two legs and be sure you don't split them with your needle you know that can happen easily and then you're going to go through the other leg and go ahead and pull through. You want to give it a good little snug tug uh, when you're doing that so that it'll look more finished and polished. So we'll go ahead and finish it if you're uh, working on this along with me. And pull, give it a little snug. If you've sewn, hand sewn at all, then this is pretty simple for you. So get to the end and then I, I would say with this that your, your biggest issue would likely be you know um, catching splitting some of your yarn but that's about it okay so let's go ahead and see how that looks so this first half you can see this from this end is really no difference um, this part is whip stitched in the back loop only and this part is whip stitch in both loops So let's go ahead and open our project up and See uh, how they turned out Okay, so you can see a huge difference in this. Let me zoom it in for you Okay, so this first half was whip stitch in the uh, Back loop only okay so um, that's how that particular look, part looks. And then this was whip stitched in both loops. So you, if you wanted to show your stitching and you wanted to use a decorative yarn, a shiny yarn, or whatever you wanted to do to add a little embellishment to your project, then working in both loops in any of these uh, joining uh, stitches would uh, look good. So uh, this is for something to be more visible because you will see it a lot more and you can see that you know as the difference is here compared to this is a little bit more hidden and a little easier to fold as you can see the top half because there's no layers here it's all this all pretty much whip stitched or you know hand sewn together so um, these are the different ways that uh, you can join your project together I was trying to keep this under 15 minutes. I'll go over a little bit, but I just wanted to just give you a little friendly reminder of uh, making sure when you're doing this that you um, always have the right sides together and work from the back. 
you will waste a lot of yarn whip stitching uh, I will say because uh, you have to cut your ends off and guesstimate um, you know how much you'll need so you'll be doing um, you know a lot more weaving in because you'll tend to run out in the middle of your projects and you know it just depends on how that goes on each of your squares so I tend to shy away from uh, whip stitching with the needle for that very reason and uh, so like I said you will likely want to use the bite loop only to have your stitches more hidden and you will do your seams through both loops if you want to have your nice yarns or embellishment yarns show and have a little more decorative look uh, to your project. Uh, this was a request video. I hope you were able to benefit and learn from this. Thank you so much for the request. If anyone else has a request, feel free to email me or put a comment in uh, this video. Or, uh, and I will be more than happy to share another uh, request video with you. Uh, I will be bringing up, putting up some more videos very soon uh, as I'm uh, recuperating from a cold. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to get this out. Sorry it took so long. And thank you for watching uh, Wanzi's Crochet and Knit. Bye.